Moose, Dylan Rush. Hey, Liz, I got a weird question for you. Uh, if somebody told you in the early 2000s when you, were not, when you were in Iraq or you were in Afghanistan as an aviation electrician with the Marines, that in 20 years you'd be defending a mixed martial arts world championship, what would you say to those people? Um, I would say that they were right. <laughs> um, you know, at the, at the time, I, I had aspirations. I had dreams to fight Cyborg. I thought I was a 145-er. I had no idea that I was nowhere close. Um, so it, it definitely was a dream in my mind, but I never thought it would actually be a reality. It was just something that I was working for silently and not telling anybody that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then here we are today. And uh, in recent years, you've become a strong ad advocate for cannabis use amongst athletes. What first uh, intrigued you about that, led you to that uh, new uh, advent, uh, what, what am I trying to, what's the word? Venture, business venture, business venture. Uh, it was actually uh, one of the guys that works for this organization, the Road Warrior Foundation. Um, he was a friend that I trained with at the gym, very professional, very outgoing guy that always seemed to reach out to all the veterans in particular there and give them a sense of camaraderie, try and help them, invite them to go on these adventure tours. And he knew, that he could just see me training all the time. He's like, what do you do for your recovery? Nothing. <laughs> just keep going back to training again. Uh, so he recommended CBD and I was completely uneducated about it at the time. I thought it was a psychoactive drug that I was gonna take and I was gonna get high. And I told him, I'm a professional athlete, it's not even an option, it's not a consideration. I don't put things in my body like that. Um, but I saw how he carried himself, so it kind of seemed contradictory because that wasn't the type of person that he was. When I did research, I started to see all the benefits for it. And the first time that I used it was so impressed with everything that it did for my body that I just wanted to speak out openly to other people and educate them just because it was something where, like, I learned something about it and learned how, how silly I was for thinking the thoughts that I did. So I knew that there were other people thinking the same things. And I'm like, hey, there are options out there where you're not going to hurt and damage your body by ingesting a product that can help you. Why don't you try this out? And it just kind of started as just in-house trying to tell people about it and then turned into so much more than that. And lastly, uh, what can you tell me about the San Diego MMA scene? And do you feel like it's grown in the past couple of years? Oh, it's absolutely grown the past few years. Um, MMA in San Diego, I, I would say until COVID, MMA in San Diego, it was the mecca of MMA. If you wanted to go somewhere other than Miami, Florida, if you went to San Diego, in close proximity, you could find the most jiu-jitsu academies and the most MMA academies. Um, now with COVID restrictions and having put so much um, just adherence on certain regulations that had to be upheld, and it restricted so many businesses and they, they went down, that a lot of people moved to Austin, Texas. But prior to that, the scene was unstoppable. There was things from backyard MMA fights all the way to the largest organizations putting on venues there. Um, and it started off originally where women could very, very rarely find places to be able to train, or if they did, they just weren't gonna go anywhere with this sport. And now that's not the case. There are so many gyms that have the top athletes in the world that are represented there. Thank you, Liz. Good luck Friday. Thank you. Patrick. Hey Liz, this is Patrick McCord from Combat Sports UK. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Now you obviously just won the belt and you're facing the same opponent once again. How much film have you watched? Like how many times have you watched the previous fight? And can we expect anything new from you? Uh, you know, I've watched uh, the previous fight a lot. Um, in, in anticipation of our fight, I watched a lot of tape, both in when she was going to fight Alima Lane McFarlane. And then of course, when I knew that I was set up to fight her as well. Um, since then, I've rewatched the fight, not even for anything that she did or didn't do, but I always watch tape on my previous fights so that I can make sure that I have growth and evolution. The things that, am I doing everything in the gym? The things that we're working on, am I incorporated into the fight? What are the mistakes I made? How can I change them and adapt them? So that when I go back to the gym on Monday, there's always a game plan of things I'm trying to work on, my coaches are trying to help me with. So, of course, I've watched all the tape. And what I can say is, yeah, I've learned from all those mistakes like I do every fight. No fight is ever the same. And of course, you're going to see a different version of me on Friday night. And uh, a little bit of a different question here. Obviously, we're entering the festive season. What's your favorite Christmas movie? See, I am not a Christmas movie person. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't get it wrong. I love Christmas. But like the Christmas music, the Christmas movies is not really my thing. Um, I'm trying to think what it's called. Uh, it's the, the evil Christmas one. 
It's a scary Scrooge? movie version of it. Uh, no, not the Scrooge. It's not, not happy at all. Like, it's, um, oh, I'm having a brain fart. No, it's not new, but it's a, it's a horror f- film set with Christmas. Um, starts with a or on Christmas, those don't sound like those mix. Christmas is supposed to be jolly. It, I mean, it was, I enjoyed the experience. My wife did not, <laughs> but I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, I'll have to come back to that one and try and remember what it is. Um, but, oh, Crumpus. That's what it is. I'll, I'll put it on my list for sure. I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck on Friday. Looking forward to Thank seeing you. you fight. Thank you. Kobe? Hi, champ. Kobe from the Pro Sports Podcasters. With such a quick turnaround for the rematch, do you expect to see anything significantly different from Juliana or should it be rinse and repeat? Um, you know... I always have expectations for how a fighter is going to come out. I mean, I've now faced like Vanessa Porto, perfect example. She has more fights than I do. She's been doing this longer than I have. And she always kind of looked like a copy image every single fight until she went out with me and there was something different. And I can say that for all of the previous opponents. Um, so as much as I'm anticipating Juliana to come out with more emotion and the same opponent, I'm also prepared for the idea that she may just completely throw out her previous game plan and do something completely different. Is your confidence higher this time because you now are the champ or is it the same? No, it's absolutely the same. Um, having the champ, uh, having the belt really doesn't reflect confidence for me uh, because people are gunning for me even more. It just shows me that there's a lot more weight on my shoulders to have to back up everything that I have with that belt. Right on. Looking forward to another great performance. Thank you. Jay? Thanks very much. Just a quick one, Liz. Good to talk to you again. I just wanted to touch on that Christmas movie uh, question a little and get your thoughts on the debate. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Die Hard is absolutely a Christmas movie. Yes, I totally agree. It may not be like the Christmas movie theme that people are looking for, but it's set around Christmas. There's Christmas violence in there. It's a Christmas movie. All right. Thanks for that. And, you know, we talked previously about uh, your desire to fight in Japan at some point, hopefully next year. Obviously, it's too soon for uh, the card this New Year's. But are you going to get a chance to go over there and watch or will you be watching from home? Uh, I'll be watching from home for sure. Yeah, I I did my fight camp for the first time away from family. So my wife has an 11 month old and a six year old at home. uh, And she's been dealing with both of them for two months as well as our nonprofit with all of our dogs and our puppies and every other animal that we have there. So I have a lot of payback to do for the past two months. So there's no way that I'm going to be allowed a a trip out to Japan. Fair enough. I'll enjoy it. Best of luck this Friday. Thank you. Santiago. Hi, Liz. Thank you for the time champion and no Christmas questions from my part. So, uh, (laughs) but I do want to know how have the last couple of months been for you after winning this prestigious Bellator title? Uh, Not much has changed, um, except, I mean, as far as my life and that, how people treat me, nothing's really the same. Everything's completely the same. Uh, What has changed is for the first time, I went out of state to do my fight camp with all different people. I, every fight, in every fight camp, I try and push myself um, to step out and be uncomfortable, put myself in uncomfortable situations to grow and to evolve as much as possible find new venues, do more research, recovery, strength conditioning, you name it. Uh, and one of the things that, that finally had to do was I finally had to just step out of that state and go somewhere else, and it's been phenomenal. Everybody I've trained with was exceeded my expectations for their skill set, for their them being so humble, being so inviting, and it's been a wonderful experience I feel like has helped me so much coming into this fight. Were you just like me, shocked about the amount of people that think the first fight ended with a lot of controversy because she was clearly in a bad position, right? With the potential to get hurt badly if the ref doesn't intervene. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It was a huge surprise. Um, I mean, it was a surprise when I came out of the cage and was presented with, hey, just a heads up, know what you're walking into going to this press conference. And then to go back and, and replay to my head and be like, maybe I saw something different and it wasn't right. And then I watched the fight. And I'm like, I don't see what everybody else saw other than somebody losing their mind about something. (laughs) You are the first one to produce a finish in a flyway title fight since 2019. Your opponent is being labeled as not the most aggressive and entertaining fighter, but more steady and calculated. Do you think she's going to get out more aggressive this time from the get-go? Because she's not really used to that, right? Yeah, she's not used to that. She's not used to people. um, I mean, you can see like her first round, she basically ran away the whole time. 
And she kind of keeps that tempo of being elusive and evasive and hoping to tire out her opponents. Um, you know, I there's a part of me that anticipates she's going to come out more emotional, more aggressive, but stylistically, it's not who she is. But I'm preparing for the idea that maybe she does the exact same thing or she comes out aggressive and different. I prepared for both scenarios, so I'm ready for this fight no matter what. Thank you for the time, Liz. Cannot wait to see you perform again. Good luck on Fight Night, champ. Thank you. Ken? Hey, Liz. Kay Williams for Ken Chronicles Media. You have a very upbeat and positive vibe this morning. I mean, you're smiling. You seem very, very, very comfortable, um, which is a good thing leading up into a match. Um, what has the mental preparation been like for this fight um, the past week leading up into it? Uh, part of the mental prep, uh, like I mentioned, was getting out of my comfort zone, is going somewhere I've never been before, training with people I've never met, uh, not knowing what they're capable of. Or anytime you walk into a fight gym, it can go one of two ways. Either they're going to, to train at your tempo, or they're going to try and prove a point by you walking in there and beat the living crap out of you. So I didn't know what I was walking into. I'm like, ah, I trust my coach, and I know the decisions he makes and the people he's used for training partners. But they could change their minds when I show up. Um, and it's, it's been phenomenal. Um, it was exactly what I needed to push myself and be uncomfortable, um, to be able to focus selfishly on the fight and not have any guilt when I have to tell my wife, like, hey, I can't pick our son up. Uh, we have to reschedule. My, this training partner fell through. They had to rechange. There's none of that guilt. And so I feel like that really put me in a good place coming into this fight. We'll take a couple more, starting with Mike. Hey, it's uh, Mike from ASAP Sports. Thanks for your time. Uh, you're undefeated in Bellator, and you haven't lost since the matchup against Valentina. I just wanted to ask what things you may have taken from the fight versus Valentina that led to this winning streak and becoming a Bellator champion. Uh, yeah, you know, going uh, into that fight, I feel like mentally I had my own doubts and questioned everything that I achieved and all the hard work I put into it. And that came at a cost. And I realized that the only person that was ever holding me back in fights was always just myself. That I had what it took and I knew going into Bellator, I was never gonna let that happen again. And I've, I've set that into fruition to be a finisher and to show them everything I have and I've stuck with that. We'll take one last one from Dylan. Hey there, Liz. I appreciate you making some time. Hello. I'm just curious because I saw an interview you did with MMA Junkie where you kind of described this one as personal because it seemed like you felt like what should have been a wonderful moment was kind of taken away from you because of like the demeanor of your opponent, etc. Do you feel like you'll have that catharsis and that sort of wonderful moment if you get the ideal outcome here? Absolutely. I know I will. I know in finishing her, there's not going to be any doubts. Uh, I'm not going to, to leave it to, to any question, any doubts in anybody's mind because it'll be her out cold, or her bleeding and broken without any doubts in anybody's minds. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Liz. Thank you.